But you thought I was okay But I'd rather stick to crappy plots That were popular in 98 Tell me if you recognize any of these Quirky underdog meets a hot attractive babe But some unfunny bully is trying to stop my goofy ways My quirky psychic and her grandma help me on my path While using an annoying voice and jokes about my ass Come on, guys, you liked it the first 18 times. Surely you'll like it 56 more. What the hell happened to me? I made you laugh when you were high in 1990. Now you treat me like a jerk. And I only make movies to get Rob Schneider work. Hey, thanks, buddy, but you forgot to put me in pixels. Well, that's because you wouldn't do blackface for me. Seriously, Sandler, even I have standards. Nah, you don't. You're right. What the hell happened to me? Please tell me I'm not this generation's poly. My movies have become a chore. And even Barry Moore cannot save me anymore. Give it up, it up, it up, it up, it up, give it up, it up, it up, it I don't know why I've angered all of you. Oh, please, God, save me, Hotel Transylvania 2. I do the same thing that I've been doing for years So what has changed now to get me all these tears? <laughs> no, Adam! Don't you see? Even your idiot characters from the past have figured it out! Your audience has grown up, but you yourself have not grown up! What are you talking about, dude? I got a lot older. No, Adam! Your audience have discovered new things, so you must discover new things! Evolve your craft! Try something different! Use your movies more than just an excuse to go on vacation! I mean, look at your latest publicity photo! Even you're sick of you! Try again, Adam Sandler! Try! I see what you're saying. I should be even more predictable. Oh, uh, no. More unfunny! Oh, I definitely didn't say that! And even more racially insensitive! Oh, Christ, I'm just gonna sit down. Hey, Rob Schneider, can you do red face? Can I? Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, ever since I did my clipless review of Jurassic World, a lot of people have been requesting me to do another recent movie. And surprisingly, it wasn't Fifty Shades of Grey. Thank God! Hey, come on, ball gags are surprisingly comfortable! How would you know? Research. No, that movie is the Adam Sandler non-hit, Pixels. Left and right, people have been asking me to review this, and at first, I didn't really get why. Okay, there is nostalgic value seeing how it ties into video games of the 80s, and I have ripped apart several Adam Sandler productions in the past, but I think the real reason is it's one of the worst reviewed films of the year. The internet has gone insane with how much they hate this movie. It's this year's Fantastic Four. I mean, before this year's Fantastic Four. Yeah, it looked bad, but 17% bad? That's lower than Waterboy, That's My Boy, and Little Nicky. 
Jesus, it's worse than those? That's like having Hitler and then finding out there's a naked Hitler. A Hitler that did even worse than Hitler and wasn't funny. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Futurama, 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 Futurama. Yes, let's first address what everybody's already talking about, how similar this concept is to an episode of Futurama. Despite the movie being based on a short film, there's an episode of Futurama where video games from the 80s attack their city that's pretty damn close in comparison to this. But I'm choosing to judge this on its own merits. Because much like Osmosis Jones and Inside Out, even if it's been done before, what matters is what they can bring to it that's new and good. And Adam Sandler movies are so the exact opposite of this that there's actually an app for it now. There is? Oh yeah, it's called the Appler Sandler. His films are actually so easy to make now that you can literally phone them in. Uh, let's see, uh... Normal boy Sandler or annoying boy Sandler? I'd rather rub my balls on a cheese grater than listen to his annoying boy. Normal voice. voice it is! Uh, let's see, bland hot girlfriend or really bland hot girlfriend? What's the difference? One gets a crying scene. I guess that one. You got it! Wait, what are those? Oh, those are add-ons that come no matter what. Kevin James, suckered in celebrities, pity cameos from SNL alumni. The only thing left to choose is funny or unfunny. Oh my god, I never knew we had a choice! Choose funny, man! Alright! Hey, what the? Come on! Come on, well... Jesus Christ, why would you throw so much time, effort, and money into something if you're clearly not gonna make it funny? You painfully obvious metaphor! <sighs> It starts off with the younger versions of Adam Sandler and Kevin James in an arcade competition, where we insert Sandler app number 162, Sweet Old Lady, who delivers our first big zinger. Look, it's Grandma! Yoo-hoo! That was the first joke, people. She says Yoo-hoo while holding up a bottle of Yoo-hoo. A hundred and ten million dollar budget, and that is their opening joke! You know, why don't you just be honest and say, Look, it's Grandma! Fuck you, bitches! I'm smoking your money! Sandler loses to a kid named Eddie, which means Eddie's gameplay will be put in a time capsule and launched into space. This brings us to present day when Sandler app number 229, down on his luck has been who people think will amount to nothing, is having a conversation with Sandler app 465, supportive best friend and binge drinking idiot Kevin James, who is president of the United States. <laughs> Yep, even the app couldn't handle something that dumb. Kevin James is president of the United States. Oh, bullshit! In a country that's actually kind of considering electing Donald Trump as our next president, even we can't be fucking stupid enough to accept this as a reality. And the weird thing is, he still plays it as the idiot best friend like he always does. He doesn't act like a president at all. Which is why, just to give you an idea about how lazy this is, I'm gonna switch out Kevin James with Obama. Now tell me if this makes any sense whatsoever. Now, Adam. Uh, Bernie, please, I'm a totally different character now. Yeah, sure. So, Adam, I'd like to get drunk while helping my loser friend in a bar, but I, uh, need to overcome this outburst I had while screaming at school children because I can't read. That's really in our movie? That's really in our movie. Shouldn't you be doing, like, presidential stuff, that kind of thing? Oh, I do. Like, when our country's under attack, I make a cake with my wife. That can't be in our movie. Page 22. That's in our movie. I'll give you a call when I need you to replace our military. If you're still in the theater, folks, I uh, salute you. Sandler then goes to a customer's house to fix their TV, but finds the owner, played by Michelle Monaghan, is crying in the closet while sipping champagne out of a sippy cup. Yeah, a sippy cup. Oh, is uh, that your kids? No, he's 12. Then why do you have... <gasps> How dare you! I can never see us becoming a couple, ever, ever! Okay, who's the fucking idiot who keeps falling for this? The couple that act like they're not gonna get together, but everybody else in the world knows they're gonna get together? Who's the one fucking idiot who keeps falling for this and encourages this cliché? Thank you. There's one less in the world. Buddy's called to the White House as Sandler Rap 143 takes place of the huge romantic coincidence that Monaghan happens to be Lieutenant Colonel. Insert saved by the Bell commercial here! Hey, hey, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Now, Adam, our military was attacked in a way that was uh, very similar to a video game. As you know, no one in our American intelligence has ever played a video game. Yeah, nerds and games often don't mix. You are the only person who can figure out these patterns that people online have figured out years ago. 
I personally only watch PewDiePie. Never touched a video game in my life. You know, I like to keep listening, but I just want to emphasize more what a gosh darn great misunderstood guy Sandler is. We need a bully. Uh, let's see here. Uh, jock, snob, businessman, popular kid. Woo! Old curmudgeon Brian Cox! Huh, I can't understand his one-dimensional dialogue, but thankfully there is a feature where you can just insert all the bully dialogue from all his other movies. You are a loser and weird. You are different from us, which makes you bad. Your marching to a different drum will lead nowhere. Now get out of here, you puppy-eyed dreamer, before I hammer in some more how wrong I am and how beautiful you are. <clears throat> but don't worry, we can't see Sandler as too much of a loser. So the app comes with unrealistic, overcompensatingly pathetic best friend. And I know it's the actor who played the snowman from Frozen and not the actual snowman from Frozen, but I'm choosing him because the only funny thing they have in common is that you want to see them both impaled. Whoa! Aren't you that perverted kid from my past? <laughs> yep. I spent 30 years wishing a video game character would come to life and make love to me. Ah, uh, just like my fan base. Now let's teach him that sitting on your lazy ass playing video games can somehow make you a hero. I think this calls for some inane gibberish. Jimmy, Tommy, Tommy, Doo! So the aliens misinterpret the time capsule and think it's an act of war. Therefore, Sandler, an unfunny pervert, instruct the soldiers about how to defeat them. But of course, when they finally attack, nobody listens. No, no! You're supposed to shoot all the way to the left! Do not listen to him, even though we are supposed to. We are military and not trained to follow orders. But Sandler grabs a gun and starts shooting him up like an action hero. Because playing this at home is clearly the same thing as fighting in the field. And he kills them all off, proving that Adam Sandler is in fact better than the military. Most unorthodox. This calls for a party where the president chugs the hell out of everybody. Uh, Mr. President, don't you think we should try communicating with the aliens to negotiate out of any further trouble? No. Now's the time to chug beer. Being the overweight, rambunctious white man that I am. Again, I took some liberties here. It's my job to go Ted Kennedy on this beer. Overweight white man! Overweight white man! But knowing another threat is on the way, they call in Eddie, the gaming champion from years ago played now by Peter Dinklage. Only, seeing how he's in a Sandler movie, all his talent has to be Shyamalan. In reverse. Huh? Okay, look, you know how in a Shyamalan film you take something that's not funny and you make it funny? Yeah. Well, in an Adam Sandler movie, you take something that's funny and you make it not funny. Oh, thanks, buddy. Ooh, the app also allows the uncomfortable moment of silence that follows every unfunny joke that is never filled with laughter. Whores, peeing, and farts. Draw it out. Happy Madison still thinks the audience is laughing at this. Christ, this is too awkward even for me. And I'm Shyamalan! So the final challenge is chasing Pac-Man in the city as Sandler, Pervert, and Dinklage represent the ghosts in cars as Monaghan advises them from the sidelines. Okay. Why in this universe does being good at Pac-Man suddenly translate into being good at driving? Would you really trust your fate in the hands of perverty Froman? I'm funny because I don't make you laugh. Wouldn't it make more sense if the Lieutenant Colonel, the one that's been in the field, was driving, and Sandler's men, the people that have just been watching on a screen, were advising? Wouldn't that just add up more? No, 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 you, you don't want that. You don't want it because I, I gotta be the hero. So uh, you, you can't really take it that seriously. But the reason that doesn't work, Sandler, is because you act like you're taking it so seriously. Like, look at the scene after you defeat Pac-Man. You're clearly supposed to feel for this romance because it goes on for fucking ever and there's no laughs. If you want to go full silly, fine. Then leave out the serious romance. Leave out the generic bully. Leave out the complicated rules you're making up for this world because they clearly don't make any sense. These are so poorly written, we can't tell when you're supposed supposed to be funny, you're supposed to be real. No, 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 it's okay. There's a special feature on the app that lets you know when you're supposed to take me seriously and when you're not. 
It's actually a musical app. Yeah, you listen to the music, it lets you know, because I've actually heard it so many times, my personality actually kind of changes along with it. I don't know if she'll ever love me. Maybe we're just meant to be apart. Come on, guys! We're gonna go get my girlfriend back! Who said I was flirting? I didn't say I was flirting. I'm gonna win the championship and save Grandma. Huh. So, music to tell us how to feel. Does that mean you're gonna finally give me funny lines? Don't ever ask me that again, Dicklidge. But the aliens claim that Earth cheated, not playing by the video game rules, and unleash all their pixelated characters on the world. How did this happen? I can answer that. I entered the cheat code to teleport my car in the last challenge like I did years ago to beat you. Wait, can I take this one? Are you fucking kidding me? No, seriously, are you fucking kidding me? First of all, how did you enter a cheat code at a championship? Did none of the hundreds of people there see you enter it? Second of all, where did you enter it? Your fucking car? Did you have a control panel on your wheel? Or did you just honk fucking Morse code at them? Third of all, how the fuck did you teleport your car? This is real life! You can't teleport your car or enter cheat codes in real life. We all said yes to this script. We wanted our names on this. Could, could we just like, uh, hug it out a bit? Uh, I just need to know that we're gonna survive all of this. Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks, okay. okay. Hey, look everyone. I'm doing the robot instead of responding appropriately to hostile alien life. Overweight white man, overweight white man. Yep, do the robot. -a. And now we reach the part of the app that nears the end of every Adam Sandler movie giving up. Yep, they just give up. You know how in most movie climaxes that's where they try their hardest? Well here, that's where they try their least. In fact, there's even a game on the app that's simply entitled, The Lazier the Writer, The Faster the Paycheck. This is where you add up how many times the writer clearly didn't give a shit and just wrote down anything he wanted to get his paycheck a little faster. Let's take a look. The aliens gave several trophies earlier, one of them being Qbert, and only now, several days later, think to ask him anything about their alien race. So what's the history of your species, Asgore? Watch me win Call of Duty! That duty. The aliens attack full force with all their pixelated characters, which is neat, but they make it clear that when they touch something, it turns into pixels, but then when a crane stops Frogger, nothing happens. But really, who gives a shit when the president comes out and says this? They wanted to put me in a bunker? I said, no thanks. Instead, I'm gonna fight video game aliens and, uh, save the world. Actually, that'd be pretty cool if Obama really did that. But he didn't, it was Kevin James. Put it back in there. Yay, your president Paul Blart is gonna shoot up aliens. Someone give me a beer to chug. Now that's the stupidity I'm used to. It's like Independence Day, only that was hilarious and this isn't. Unfunny pervert's video game character he fantasized over comes to life. Except she's not pixely, she looks just like a real person. There is no reason for this. Oh, yeah, and despite her not talking at all, she also falls in love with the unfunny pervert. There is, again, no reason for this. The less I try, the closer my money gets to me. So the aliens send a CG Max Headroom that somehow looks even more fake than the original Max Headroom to summon our heroes for one last challenge, again, really no reason at all, to get them a chance to win. But once again, they have to play by the game's rules. So what do our heroes do? They cheat and don't play by the game's rules. Yeah, remember that scene earlier saying how cheating was bad? Well, that's exactly what they do, except it ends up winning the day. The only reason it's okay here is because it makes Adam Sandler look good. Let's talk it. I'm almost rewarded for my incredible gift. This means all the pixels disappear, including Unfunny Perv's love. But it's okay because Cuber turns into her. This is so blatantly lazy that even Sandler himself shrugs off how little this makes sense, but doesn't give a shit. Nobody questions why. Hubert suddenly turned to a hot lady. Oh well, who cares? We just wasted millions of dollars and doomed video game movies forever! Woo! I did it! I have asked what thousands of writers have tried years to do for a living. Yay! And to preserve our comedic masterpiece, we're taking down every video on Vimeo that has the word pixels in the title. Yes, we really did that. We're kind of fucking insane. Oh, and while we're at it. 
We know what you want! We're so not behind the times! And that was Pixels, one of the most hated films of the year. Is it one of the worst, if not the worst, Adam Sandler production that has ever been put together? No. It's not even close, really. There are so many other films that he's had a hand in that have tried less and accomplished less than this has. There was one or two neat effects, and every 20 minutes, maybe I had a little bit of a laugh, which is more than I can say for some of his other productions. So, why is there so much hate? Why does this one get people just so fucking pissed off? Because it's 20 fucking 15. The fact that Sandler is still using these lazy gimmicks with no changes is just becoming insulting. Even if you don't like his humor, which is totally understandable, you felt like he was at least trying. You felt like even though it was weird, there was some form of effort being put into his work before. Here, it's like a $110 million autopilot. We know Sandler, as well as all the people here, can be both talented and funny. But as so many comedians are trying to evolve and adapt with the times, Sandler seems bizarrely disinterested in getting better. I think we're angry because we want to like Pixels. We want to like Sandler's work. And when we find it's not only bad, but feels uncaringly bad, we wonder why nobody's waking up after all these bombs and saying, let's try something different. Let's step up our game, step up our jokes, step up our characters. This is the tipping point where people are just saying enough is enough. Give us effort again, give us energy, give us something that feels fresh and new. Similar to the first surreal time that we've ever encountered here. Until then, we still have the Sandler app, and hopefully there'll be a day where this will no longer be a requirement in any of his films. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and... Come back! I never left. Not you! Hmm. What the hell happened to me? I used to be the clown prince of comedy. I used to say they're all gonna laugh at you. And now I'm just praying that you'll laugh at me. Give me Tommy, Tommy, Tommy too. But give me Tommy, Tommy, Tommy too. Yay! Your president Paul Blart is gonna shoot up aliens!